sorry sir madam please uh, begin we are live yes 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 sir okay good afternoon sir and good afternoon to everyone those who are here and today we are with dr jogendra kumar uh sir is here to deliver a talk on transport phenomena and porous media food before hand over the session to him i would like to introduce him to all of you there is a brief introduction about him sir has completed his phd in 2011 from uh banaras hindu university varanasi the research area in fluid dynamics sir major uh, the major area of his research is fluid dynamics and he has published 14 research paper in uh, asean and scopus and the reputed journals and recently sir has published a uh, uh, one of his research paper in human journal with the impact factor 6.268 congratulate sir for that and uh, sir has uh, organized uh, many international and uh, conferences and workshop and uh, sir is also published three chapter in book and many more things so we are here now i would like to invite to sir kindly share uh, kindly deliver your talk thank you sir uh, thank you dr patiba am i audible yes sir you are complete okay sir. thank you thank you very first i want to express my sincere thanks to department of applied sciences and humanities barodra university for inviting me to deliver this talk particularly dr pratibha tyagi as you can see the topic of today talk is transport phenomena in porous media the study of fluid flows in porous media has very significant role in uh, if you see in last 2 to 3 decades this uh, area has been a very attractive part of the study of the academician whether they belongs to india or abroad the there are many applications in various fields like hydrology uh, chemical engineering petroleum engineering even in uh, if you see biomedical or medicine in engineering when one is interested to know the uh, fusion of medicine in blood through porous veins right so in overall this is very uh, important topic uh, nowadays uh, so let us start our talk this presentations constitute nine sections very first one is fluid mechanics second one is types of fluids where we will discuss how many types of fluids exist in the nature then we will discuss the type of fluid flows right in fourth section we will discuss thermal instability that is actually the uh, heat transfer phenomena and in fifth section fifth sections we will discuss hydrodynamic configurations that means if we are going to discuss some problems that must be discussed in some specific regions and of course with some assumed conf configurations that we will discuss in section 5 then we will discuss mathematical uh, expressions which governs the fluid flow right if you are going to st study fluid flows then we must have some mathematical expressions to work out in section 7 we will discuss boundary conditions since we are going to discuss a problem in some specific regions then we must have some conditions on the boundary to get required solutions in section 8 we will discuss some methods uh, just few methods since i am going to take a research problem in section 9 to uh, that is why i have taken eight sections that may be a introductory part that will have help to understand the problems which uh, i am going to share with you fluid mechanics what is fluid mechanics if you see mechanics is the very uh, broad area and in mechanics we are uh, uh, there is a part solid mechanics and fluid mechanics but we are we are interested we will keep focused on fluid mechanics again in fluid mechanics there are three sub disciplines one is fluid one is fluid statics 
and the one is fluid dynamics and the most important sub discipline of fluid mechanics is fluid dynamics in fluid statics we study the flow when they are at rest that means there is no motion in fluid dynamics we study the uh, fluid when they are in motion and in fluid dynamics we study the effect of various forces which act on the fluid when they are in motion so this is the structure of fluid mechanics uh, uh, our problems our presentations solely belongs to fluid dynamics let us come to the fluids types of fluids to see mainly there are two types of fluids everybody knows that is compressible and incompressible right here further i am going to discuss incompressible fluids and incompressible fluids there are five types of fluids which comes in uh, into considerations very first one is ideal fluid ideal fluid actually is the image an imaginary fluid because this doesn't exist in the nature ideal fluid is the fluids which have no viscosity which have no viscosity what is viscosity viscosity is the a force which resist a fluid to flow right if a flow fluid have has no viscosity that is called ideal fluid and at the same times there is no existence of such force the other one is real force so a fluid which have at least some viscosity is called real fluids so whatever uh, fluids we come into uh, discussions those are real fluids further in real fluids there are classifications which uh, which are newtonian fluids and non newtonian fluids in newtonian fluids newtonian fluid is the fluid which obey the newton's law of viscosity what is newton law of viscosity newton law of viscosity is the says that shear stress is directly proportional to shear strength what is shear stress shear stress is the force which act on upon the cross sectional area from which through fluid is flowing that is shear stress so shear stress is directly proportional to shear strain shear strain is equivalent to velocity uh, gradient here we can see the expression one equation one tau equal to mu du by dy here tau is the shear stress mu is the dynamic viscosity that is again constant of proportionality and du by dy is the velocity gradient and all real fluids are not all but some real fluids are newtonian which for obeys the uh, newton's law of viscosity and the fluids which do not obey which does not obey the newton's law of viscosity is called non newtonian fluids there are further classifications in non newtonian fluids right so very first let us see mathematical ex expression for non newtonian fluid that is given in equation 2 you see in equation 2 a n and b all are constants and with on the base of values of this constant we may classify non newtonian fluid in dilatant fluid pseudo plastic fluids and bingham fluids which are the major extraction of this structure you can see dilatant fluid is the non newtonian fluid for which n is greater than 1 and b is 0 similarly pseudo plastic fluid is the non newtonian fluid for which n takes value less than 1 and b is 0 the other classification is bingham plastic fluid ya bingham fluid again in bingham there is classification bingham plus pseudo plastic fluid bingham fluid is the fluid for which n is 1 and b not equal to 0 so these are the mathematical expressions to uh, decide whether the non newtonian fluid is dilatant pseudo plastic or bingham and all these types of fluids we can see with a single graph you here see the horizontal axis represents shear stress rate and the vertical axis represents shear stress you see if there is real linear relationship between shear strain and shear stress fluid is newtonian you see fluid is newtonian 
and if they have non linear relationship fluid is non newtonian further in non newtonian we have dilatant fluids we have pseudo plastic fluids we have bingham plastic and bingham plastic again we have bingham pseudo plastic fluids then there are fluid flows which had been classified in various terms the first one is steady flow steady flow is the fluid flow steady is flow is the fluid flow in which properties of fluids are invariant with respect to time at any designated locations at any particular locations or we can say at any point so in properties of fluids we have velocity we may have pressures we may have density so these are the properties of fluids the so deal this this proper these variables will be invariant with respect to time then we say that fluid fluid is steady flow and if they are dependent on time we say that fluid flow is unsteady flow that we say you see here space del b by del t that we are uh, discussing for the particular space for the particular particular locations then there is uniform flow non uniform flow so like the steady flow uniform flow is the fluid flow where the fluid properties are invariant with respect to location that mean if the, there is a fluid flow so throughout the fluid flow at the same time if you observe a property at the same time so they will be invariant with respect to space but we have to be careful this observation must be done at same time at a particular time right and if they are dependent on space the property of fluids are dependent on the space we say that this is non uniform flows flow further there is steady and uniform flow unsteady and non uniform flow if the criteria of steady and uniform flow simultaneously uh satisfies then we say that fluid flow is steady and uniform similarly unsteady and non uniform flow if the criteria for unsteady and non uniform both are satisfied then we say that flow is unsteady and non uniform that we you can see the for, from the expression 8 further there is rotational and irrotational flow right so many of us uh, have la has learned in the vector calculus about this when flow the flow is irrotational when rotational right and that can be understood through curl as well but here see the definition if flow is rotational if fluid elements undergo rotation about their axis while flowing along stream lines all right so the flow is rotational when it vertex its vorticity vector is non zero in some of its region otherwise it is is irrotational what are the stream lines you see here there are stream lines we have stream lines path line streak lines right so there are these are the some fundamental things and i hope everybody knows about them the other one very important uh, fluid flow is laminar and turbulent laminar what is laminar flow the fluid flow in which adjacent layer of uh, fluids do not mix with each other we can see with this graph see these are the layers of the fluids and they are moving from left to right if you see and they are moving in parallel direction in parallel they are not mixing with each other then we uh, such type of flow we say laminar flow and further if you want to know with mathematical expressions whether the flow is laminar or not then there is one nine dimensional number that is known as reynold number if the value of reynold number is less than 2000 we say that fluid is flow is laminar and if it is greater than 4000 then we say that fluid is turbulent flow flow is turbulent turbulent means the fluid particles mix with each other 
we can see from these figures, you see, they are mixing with each other. So such kind of flow is non-turbulent flow. Then next section is thermal instability. Thermal instability is the, is happen mainly due to heat transfer, right? And how heat transfer happens from higher to lower, right? From higher temperature to lower temperatures. This is, see this graph, further there is mode of heat transfers that is very fundamentals. We say mode of heat transfer is conduction, convection and radiations. When heat transfer in same medium, medium, we say conductions. When it transfer from one medium to another, then it, it is known as convections. And if there is vacuum, heat, heat is being transferred, but there is no medium. Then we say that transfer is radiation. There is radiation transfer. Further in convections, we will focus on convection. The convection is the moment in a gas or liquid. Here, are both fluid, fluids have been considered, whether it is compressible or incompressible. The convection is the moment in, uh, in liquid in which the warmer parts move up and the cooler parts move down. That is because of density difference, right? That, we'll see, that we will see later, density vari uh, uh, variance. The deformation of sea and land bridge from the classic are the Example of convections, classic example of convections. So you can see what is bridge form, uh, sea bridge and land bridge. One of the well-known natural convection is the relay Bernard convections, right? And in uh, if a fluid is heated sufficient, sufficiently large enough below, that is density gradient is sufficiently strong, the hot fluid will rise and causing a convective flow. We can see this from this figure. This is the pot and here there is a fluid and uh, a heat is providing, is being provided from the bottom, you see. So when we provide heat from bottom, the lower the fluid, which in the lower section of the bottom will gain heat. And that is why due to this heat, they will expand, right? They will expand because their density will reduce. So due to reduction, due to decrease in uh, density, the fluid will expand. And at the same time, the molecular, they will be lighter in weight. But at the same time, if you see on the, uh, if you see on the top, they, the, the density will be greater than, than the lower one. And since the density is greater on the top, and so the weight of the molecules on the top will be more than the lower molecules. And that is why heavy particles, heavy fluid particles will replace the light one. So heavy fluid particles will come, will replace this one. And so the light fluid particles will go up, heavy fluid particles will go down. And this process will continue till they will get uniform temperatures. So in this way, you see this, this, these are two dimensional roles, right? Further, uh, we can discuss convection in term of one non-dimensional number that is called relay number. The relay number is a dimensionless parameter which shows the thermal instability after a crit uh, certain value, which is known as critical relay numbers. So for, after a certain value of the relay number, the convection on, will onset, right? Convection will start, I mean to say. So that value is called critical relay number. And this is defined, RA represents critical in, uh, relay number, which is here G is gravitation, alpha, beta, d power four, kappa, nu. Right, alpha, you see G is the accelerations, kappa is the thermal conductivity. Here, this is nu, nu is the kinematic viscosity, D is the uh, length, yeah, we can say the distance between the two plates, and beta is the magnitude of the vertical temperature gradients. The, these are the mathematical terms, and uh, there is derivation for this. 
in relay relay bernard, bernard convection in porous medium is also known as hotton rogers life food convections right now in convections there are further classification that is double diffusive convections right the problem of convections induced by temperature and concentration gradients the problem of convection induced by temperature and concentration gradients or by concentration gradients of two species known as double con double diffusive convection but in this case these two uh, uh, gradients at uh, gradients do not intersect it, uh, each other do not interact with each other right of course there are two temperature uh, two gradients one is temperature and other one is concentration gradient or we may have two different type of concentration gradients but they do not intersect in that scenario we will say that this is double diffusive convections and if they interact with each other we say that this double diffusive convection is cross diffusion convection cross diffusion convections in cross diffusion convections the flux not only depend on single uh, gradient that means energy flux uh, created due to concentration gradients mass flux created due to temperature gradient so due to concentrations part there is term introduced that is mass that is the that is the reason behind mass transfers you see to so in cross diffusion convections there uh, uh, we encounter two uh, parameters which is known as dufour parameter and sorate parameters right a flux of salt that means flux of flux of concentrations caused by temperature gradient is called sorate the effect is called sorate effect and that is represented by a number which is known as sorate number and we denote them that by sr similarly dufour effect that is the flux of heat caused by special gradient of concentrations and we denote this number by d this uh, this is the symmetric gram uh, symmetric uh, diagram for uh, cross diffusion convections we can see these are two parallel plates right and distance between these two parallel plates are d you see the lower plates are, are placed at z equal to 0 and the upper plate is at z equal to d and we are the g is has value uh, 0 0 g because we are considering vertical directions and these are reference temperature and concentration on lower plate and at or at upper plate and this you can see the porous media right so the hydro hydrodynamic configurations in hydrodynamic configurations we will talk about porous media so a porous media consists solid matrix with an interconnected wired filled with a fluids right so we have a solid matrix matrix yeah we can say we have a uh, regions and that regions constitute with solid and fluids right to so mean uh, there are so many examples you can see uh, uh, rocks soils biological tissues man made materials like cement foam ceramics even in our body lungs is the live example of porous media the interconnectedness of the wire allows the flow of one or more fluids through the materials right so when we have a regions where there is pores which are interconnected that is only the Uh, that uh, fluid flow may be possible, right? If they pour the pores, the wire the um, wire uh, are not connected, then fluid flow is not possible. That is why they must be connected for a fluid flow. If we encounter a single fluid in porous media, then we say that this is single phase flow, single phase flow. And if we there are more than one fluids. then we say two phase flow so more than in case of more than one fluids there are fluids and air 
that means both fluid types of fluid compressible and compressible are there then further again you you can imagine if there is a solid matrix and uh, that can uh, which can tend pores so not necessary not necessary that every pores are connected there may be more some more pores which are not connected to each other and so the fluid flow is not possible with those pores right and due to which a term introduced here effective porosity effective porosity what is porosity porosity is the ratio of uh, wired volume upon solid volume of solid matrix right and effective porosity is the volume of connected wires ya connected pores upon volume of the solid matrix you can see here porosity is the ratio of the volume of the wires to the total volume of the porous media this is porosity but what is effective poro porosity that is the volume of the connected wires ya connected pores upon total volume the other one thing comes permeability what is permeability permeability is the measure of the ease with which fluids will flow through a porous media all right the ease of flow is measured by permeability right the porosity and the shape of the pores defines the permeability so that's mean permeability also depend on geometric structure right sorry permeability depends on the porosity as well as the shape of the pores that mean geometric uh, part of the pores the higher the permeability the more rapidly the fluid will flow through the pores right if permeability is more that mean the ease of flow is very good flow fluid is flowing through the medium very easily if permeability is low that mean there are so many obstacle right and flow flow is not uh, uh, i can say um, simple and permeability is measured by darcy darcy is the permeability measuring units in rocks and similarly the permeability is measured by henry permeter or newton permeter ampere in magnetic in electromagnetism now we will discuss governing question of fluid for fluid flows right so to write to govern the governing question for fluid flow is very important one is navier stokes equations which is also known as momentum equations right so you can see the uh, see equation 9 that represents momentum equations here del u by del t that is change in velocity because u is the velocity this term represents advection right this term is the diffusion here nu is the kinematic viscosity this is the pressure and this rho is the porosity of the fluids and f is the body force right so body force term represents external forces that act on fluids right the external forces so in convection there is further classification which we are not going to discuss here there is free convection forced convection and mixed convection right so in in that scenario there there is introduced body force sorry external force that is f but we are this we will discuss the natural convection or free convections that's mean convection where no external uh, force being applied right and the governing equation for fluid flow is the energy equations through this we measure the temperature transfer heat transfers you see it is based on the law of conservation of energy here capital t is the temperature small t is the time you see this is the local derivative this is the convective term and this is the diffusion term all right kappa is the thermal conductivity this is which is proportional constant in fourier's law of heat conduction so this in energy equations uh, has been derived from the fourier's law of heat conduction the other very important governing equation is conservation of mass all right 
तो कंजर्वेशन ऑफ मास दैट इज आल्सो नोन एज इक्वेशन ऑफ कंटिन्यूटी तो सिंस वी आर डीलिंग विथ इनकम्प्रेसिबल फ्लूड वेयर डेंसिटी इज कॉन्स्टेंट एंड दैट इज वाई इक्वेशन ऑफ कंटिन्यूटी वी गेट दैट इज डाइवर्जेंस ऑफ यू इक्वल टू जीरो राइट तो वट इज कंजर्वेशन ऑफ मास नेट मास चेंज ऑफ एनी सब रीजन इज जीरो फ्लूड इज इनकम्प्रेसिबल एंड कम्स फॉर कंटिन्यूस कंटिन्यूम एजेपन राइट विथ दिस थ्री यू सी मोमेंटम इक्वेशन इनर्जी इक्वेशन एंड कंटिन्यूटी इक्वेशन there is another equation which is also known as equation of state to complement these three equations right when we are going to study the heat and mass transfer transfer transport phenomena in fluid flows so with these three equations obrek bosnik obrek bosnik approximations also considered for the mathematical uh, calculations what is this for thermal convection to occur the density of the fluid must be a function of temperature right see there is conflict in compressible fluid we assume uh, it is uh, said that density is constant but what we are telling here bosnik what is bosnik approximation for thermal convection to occur the density of the fluid must be a function of the temperature and hence we need an equation of state to complement the equation of mass momentum and energy this simplest equation of state that means simplest bosnik approximation is given by 11 but remember here i am talking we are talking density variations so that is only valid for the vertical considerations right for the vertical consideration other than that density is considered as constant what is rho not rho not is the fluid density at some reference point at some reference temperature that is t not alpha is the thermal expansion coefficient and this one is known as bosnik approximations and if you are going to deal crash diffusions we will get we will there will be uh, one and other term which will be add here that will be b plus beta into s minus s not where s is the concentrations different models in porous medium in porous medium we can say there are different models one is dorsey models and the one is brinkman extended dorsey model so this is the dorsey model dorsey model is applied only for the laminar flow right when fluid flow is laminar you can apply dorsey model and brinkman expanded ex, uh, extended torsi model this is considered for the momentum transport due to newtonian fluid flow in confined porous media so that mean we will uh, you can apply darcy model for the laminar flow other than laminar flow you can apply brink extended torsi model and some other models boundary conditions since we are discussing we, we have to discuss a problem in a specific regions and so to find the solutions of the problems we must have to impose a, some conditions on the boundary right so for mathematical boundary modeling of any dynamical system the boundary conditions of the dependent variable are very important what are dependent variable of our interest that may be temperature that may be concentrations right for velocity boundary conditions we are mainly defined in two ways rigid and free right so since we will define conditions on boundary that means lower plate and at upper plate those uh, boundaries may be impermeable may be permeable right depending upon depending on the lower and upper boundary we can define define different boundary conditions we can define rigid rigid boundary conditions we can define free free boundary conditions we can define rigid free boundary conditions we can define free rigid boundary conditions so these are four conditions which can be uh, defined 
for the boundaries. For every boundary conditions, normal velocity will be zero. That is W equal to zero. You see, that is the normal component of the velocity because when we consider velocity, that will be, uh, there will be three part in X directions, it will be represented by U. The part of velocity component of velocity is U in Y direction is B, V and in Z direction that is W. So W is zero for every boundary conditions. But for rigid surface, that's mean when boundary is impermeable, so we have DW equal to zero. Here capital D stand for del by del, by del Z. And for free surface, that's mean when boundary is permeable, the tangent, zero tangential stress, right? That is D2W equal to zero. Here D2 is del two over del Z two. Similarly, we can consider thermal boundary conditions like isothermal, adiabatic. We can consider boundaries for the concentrations. Yeah, we say salute, so that is isohaline, right? There are some boundary conditions. Then we discuss the stability analysis, right? We discuss stability, linear stability analysis. We discuss nonlinear stability analysis. To discuss the, this stability analysis, what we do? We perturb the uh, system from the quiescent mode, right? When they are stable, they are in stationary mode, we disturb the system, all right? And observe, and we discuss the stability of the uh, problem. And when we disturb, when we perturb, the uh, system and to study if to study we does not consider the nonlinear terms then that study is called linear stability analysis and if we re there remains nonlinear term that is called nonlinear stability analysis to the uh, to discuss linear stability analysis the very popular method is normal mode techniques where we take exponential of iota ax ax ay y plus sigma t here ax ay are the horizontal wave numbers right because when we part of the systems there will be a wavy forms right and due to wavy forms there will be into there will be introduced wavelength and so the wave numbers you see here, sigma is the frequency of perturbations, right? And if real part of and this sigma may be complex, real or complex, right? So suppose it is complex. If real part of sigma is greater than zero, then the disturb disturbance will be amplified. That's mean to study the uh, stabilities, we disturb the system, we disturb the uh, dynamical systems. If that disturbance go exponentially, right? That means that will not return in original positions. Then for that real part of sigma is greater than zero. And if real part of sigma is less than zero, that disturbance will lie, will die, and the system will come into the original conditions, in original frame. Further, if you want to uh, analyze nonlinear stability, then there is very popular method that is truncated Fourier series methods. And that, um, that is very well known. Further, for the numeral, if you are not able to solve the problem analytically, we will go for numerical methods. And for that, Range Kuta method is the popular one to deal. This is the last sections. In this sections, uh, I have taken a problem from my thesis that is uh, cross diffusion convection in Newtonian fluid saturated rotate, rotating porous medium, right? That means here we have considered cross diffusions. That means there are two uh, uh, gradients. One will be a concentration gradients and the other one will be temperature gradients. We have considered Newtonian fluids, right? That means that fluid will go 
obey the newton's law of viscosity and also we have consider here rotational that is the some kind of external effect on the tra transport phenomena right in external trans external uh, um, force may be consider as rotational here the see here effect of rotation on linear and non linear instability of cross diffusive convections in an anisotropic porous medium saturated with newtonian fluid has been investigated normal mode technique has been used for linear stability analysis and non linear analysis is done using spectral method that is again truncated fourier series method involving only two terms so since we know that fourier series uh, has so many terms in finite terms and in our calculation in our calculation we will consider only two term that is why it is known as truncated fourier series dorsey model has been with coriolis force terms has been implied coriolis coriolis term introduced due to rotation here right and further non linear analysis is used to find thermal and concentration muscle number and then we will discuss the effect of various parameters including so rate and dufer since there is cross diffusions and so the so rate and dufer parameter will be introduced in the problems this is the mathematical model of the problem you see we have taken continuity equations right then momentum equations here this is momentum equations we have taken rotation that is why this omega capital omega that is angular velocity this is the pressure this is the external force that is actually buoyancy force you see and here k is the permeability we have taken any tropic porous medium that's mean probability is not uniform in all directions right so property of the medium is different in different directions that is why k has been considered as vector that is why there is k scalar dot k here mu is the dynamic viscosity capital k is the permeability vector this is the vector energy equations you see this is the energy equations since there are the, we are considering cross diffusions and so in energy equation there is Uh, uh, solutal diffusion term as well that is del to s kappa 1 1 is the thermal diffusivity of the fluid kappa 2 1 is the cross diffusion due to concentration gradient similarly this is solutal equations one more equation will be introduced um, due to cross uh, diffusion convections uh, here kappa 2 2 is the solutal uh, uh, yeah concentration diffusivity of the fluid and kappa 2 1 is the cross diffusion coefficient due to temperature and this is the bosnic approximations you see since there are two gradients temperature and solutal gradients that is why this term alpha s into s minus s not has been considered in bosnic approximations right here alpha t is the thermal expansion coefficient and alpha s is the solutal expansion coefficient and t not s not are the reference temperature and concentration respectively now the basic state of fluid is assumed to be quiescent that means they are in stationary state and uh, there is no motions that means q is zero uh, pressure since pressure act vertically and so pressure is the function of j right so these are the some conditions so very first we will pulse up the system and then we will non dimensionalize these four equations 12 13 14 15 and 16 we will non dimensionalize why we non dimensionalize the system to reduce the parameters right we reduce through non dimensionals we reduce the parameter for the considerations so here after non dimensionalization non dimensionalization and dropping the asterisk we get 17 18 19 and 20 these are the non dimensionalized equations here you see there are non dimensionalized parameter one is very first one is ta taylor number this is known as taylor number and this come into existence because of rotation factor here rat is the again non dimensional number this is thermal relay number ras is the 
thermal concentration number. And these two parameters, thermal relay number and thermal concentration number, decide the onset of heat convections or mass transfer. This is the energy equation. This is the solid equations. And this here, see, du, du for parameter and so rate numbers come into existence due to crash diffusion convections. Boundaries are considered to be free free, isothermal, and isohaline. Therefore, therefore, the appropriate boundary conditions are. So this has been this we have been considered in boundary conditions earlier in, in earlier slides. So for the free free boundary conditions, del two dw d two w equal to zero. So capital D was the del two over del J two, and reference temperature and solute have been considered zero at boundaries. Now we eliminate the pressure term to uh, to simplify our calculations. Right, we apply two times uh, call on the momentum equations, and finally we will get equation twenty three. Right, twenty three, and these are the mathematical calculations. This is the result of so many mathematical calculations which cannot be discussed here, but this come after. Operating calls twice on the momentum equations. Right here, Q is the new term. This is the twice a uh, curl of velocity vector, and this is defined here. Q one is this, Q two is this, Q three is this. Here, J is the mechanical anisotropy parameter. Right, which come into existence due to the different permeability. This is actually ratio of permeability in x direction and in z direction. Then we will do linear stability analysis. So to perform linear stability analysis, we take z component and linearize them by neglecting the product term. Product term means that those are non-linear terms. So to do linear stability analysis, we neglect non-linear terms. So we will. Consider z component of of from the equations nineteen, you see nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, and when we will club all together, we will get equation twenty four, right? Now since we are going to do linear stability analysis, we will consider normal mode techniques. That is w equal to w z. This is capital W z exponential. This again sigma. Is the frequency you see L and M are the horizontal wave number, and this W Z is the amplitude of the wave frequency. And with this boundary consider, consider the boundary conditions which are already have been considered. With that exceptions, we will get boundary condition twenty six for this amplitude. We obtain the expression for thermal relay number, right? And then, when applying twenty-five, considering twenty-five on twenty-four, and applying these boundary conditions, we will get equation twenty-six, twenty-seven for thermal relay number, right? For ther thermal relay number. Now, for linear stability analysis, sigma must be real and zero, right? So, if you want to learn more about this, you can study normal. What is normal mode techniques? And for this, you can use the book of E. S. Chandrasekhar on hydrodynamic stability. Right. So, for more understanding, please go through that book of E. S. Chandrasekhar. So, under the conditions, uh, we will get this uh, thermal uh, relay number equation twenty nine. Right, and from twenty nine, from twenty eight, we this we will differentiate with respect to a, which is wave number, and we'll find critical wave number, and on that critical wave number, replacing the value of critical wave number in twenty eight, we will get critical relay number. Actually, this is the critical relay number, thermal relay number, right? And this is the critical wave number. Further, for non-linear stability analysis, we will apply truncated Fourier series. Right? I am not going to discuss all this, but on applying 
truncated Fourier series, we will get equation 31, 32, 33. And a local nonlinear stability analysis shall be performed by using a spectral method that is truncated Fourier series method. This study will help in understanding the physics of the problem with minimum mathematical expressions, right? Then we will uh, study the interaction between psi and t, psi and s, psi and v respectively. Psi is the stream functions that come into existence with the vorticity vector. Then we will perform nonlinear stability analysis with these equations here, psi, t, s, and v. Psi is stream function, t is the temperature, s is the solute, v is the velocity, you can see. And uh, after solving this, we will get equation 38. And finally, what we will do from, we will uh, apply this in equation, sorry, in equation 31, 32, 33, we will consider this and hence we'll find 38, right? So now eliminating all amplitude with the help of 39 to 42, right? Uh, I think something is missing here. So we will get a mathematical expression in term of E1 only, which will given 43. So through some mathematical calculations and fundamental uh, formulae, we will find Nussel, thermal Nusselt number. Nusselt number uh, is uh, discuss the thermal transfer, uh, heat transfer, and we will find concentration uh, uh, Nusselt number which uh, talks about mass transfer phenomena in porous media. Then finally, we will come on result discussion, uh, where we will see the effect of uh, various parameters on the uh, transfer of heat transfer and mass transfer. So see, this is the horizontal axis. We have taken a lot because the value are very higher uh, and to uh, consider them on the required uh, range, we will take log. So this is the horizontal axis. This is the vertical axis, right? And see, if you see for the low concentration of solute, for the low concentration, the critical relay number is low, all right? That's mean if concentration is low, then convection start early. You see convection start early because convection start from the critical relay number, right? So when there is less solute, concentration are starts early and see when solute, value of solute is increasing, convection being delayed, right? You see critical relay number is going upward directions. That means convection is being delayed. And so we can say that concentration has destabilizing effect, right? If we consider solute in uh, fluid flow, then transfer phenomena, particularly heat transfer phenomena suppressed. Further, we can see the uh, effect of mechanical anisotropic parameter that is Jai. You can see when we are increasing J, the value of critical relay number is also increasing. Thus, thus we can say that an increase in mechanical anisotropy parameter that is J, there is decrease in uh, there is also increase in critical relay number, and so this have destabilizing effect. Right increasing mechanical anisotropy parameter, the value of mechanical anisotropy parameters delay the convection. The same we can say here for the tau, here tau is not shear stress, this year this time tau is the thermal diffusivity. If we can, again, you can see from this figure, when we are increasing the value of tau, the lower and hash value 0 0.3, then 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 0 0.9. That means an increase in tau results in increase in critical relay number. And if critical relay number is increasing, that means convection delayed, being delayed, right? So that means tau, that is thermal diffusivity, 
suppress the convection. In this uh, graph also you can see the effect of Taylor when we are increasing Taylor value of Taylor number 20, 25, 30, 35 and increasing Taylor number results in increase in critical number and hence this effect of Taylor number is that convection being delayed. Further, we can see the effect of so rate number. You see, if you increase, here is the reverse. You can see here, see the, the very first one 0 0.7, then 0 0.5, then 0 0.3, then 0 0.1. That's mean when we are increasing uh, so rate numbers, the incre and increasing so rate numbers results in and decrease a decrease in critical relay numbers. Please try to, uh, try to understand this graph. Every result is being reflected through this graph. When we are increasing the value of so rate numbers, there is decrease in critical relay numbers. That means the in an increasing so uh, the increase in so rate numbers advance the convection. That means convection starts early. Sorry, sorry, convection is uh, being delayed, right? Uh, okay, it has been done. Similarly, we can see the impact of uh, GU, GU for uh, number on the convections. You can see from here, early, at early, this advanced the convections and then suppress the convections, right? Here in the left, if you see an increasing DU and uh, is a decrease in critical relay number. That means this advanced convections, right? And further, an increase is in DU4 is an in results in increase in critical relay numbers. That means it suppress the convection. Further, we can here we have considered various defect of various parameters on the uh, graph which have been plotted uh, relay uh, thermal relay number versus nacelt number. So again, you see if you increase the value of mechanical inertropy parameters, ANU is decreases. Right? If you increase the J, ANU are decreases. That means heat transfer decreases, right? If there is less heat transfer, that means there is the convection is being delayed. Sim similarly, we can see the effect of DU, but here when you in when we increase the value of DU, NU is also increases, right? So that means D4 advance the convection. Here we can see the effect of so rate. When we increase the so rate numbers, and you decreases, and so so rate has uh, destabilizing uh, stabilizing effect. So rate has stabilizing effect. That means convection is being delayed. Similarly, we can see the effect of thermal diffusivity, effect of Taylor. You see, when we are increasing Taylor number, and you is decreasing. That means this has stabilizing effect, all right? Similarly, we can discuss uh, it has been done. And then uh, con uh, concentration relay number, you see, when we increase concentration relay number, there is a yes, there is increasing nacelt numbers. That means it has destabilizing effect. Further, we have uh, plotted this graph to uh, see the results for mass transfers. So this is the thermal, uh, sorry, concentration nacelle numbers, which talks about mass transfers. So here again, we can see the effect of various parameters. You see when we increase the mechanical inertropy parameters, uh, the value of mechanical inertropy parameters, concentration the nacelle number is being, uh, is decreasing and thus it has a stabilizing effect. That means on increasing mechanical inertropy parameters, mass, there is less mass transfer. 
Similarly, you can see the effect of D4. From this graph, you can observe the effect of sorate numbers. You can see the effect of uh, thermal diffusivity. You can see the effect of Taylor numbers. On All these are talking about the effect of various parameters are the mass transfers. So finally, we can conclude that uh, see the effect of cross diffusion on the onset of double diffusion convection in a rotating horizontal porous layer saturated with neutronium fluid has been considered. The problem has been solved analytically and linear and non-linear analysis have been performed. The following conclusions are drawn. The effect of increasing mechanical inostropy parameter, diffusivity ratio, and Taylor number are found to delay the onset of convection. Onset of convection means uh, the process of starting convection. Onset of convection means process of starting the convection and thus stabilizing the effect. Effect of increasing the value of sorate number is to decrease the value of relay, thermal relay number and thus advancing the onset of convection. An increment in differ parameter first advance the convection and then suppress the convection as we have discussed earlier. Similarly, we can uh, the value of NU that is thermal nacelle number and uh, concentration uh, nacelle number decrease on increasing J and TA, however, increase on increasing DU, right? That means this will uh, have the stabilizing effect and this one is, uh, uh, okay, this is decrease. So this will, this will have a stabilizing effect and DU will have destabilizing effect. Similarly, you can see an increasing tau, that is thermal diffusivity ratio and thermal, uh, sorry, concentration real number, uh, relay number, and you increases but it decreases on increasing sorate number and Taylor number. However, the trend is totally reversed in the case of concentration nacelle number. So that is all about my presentations. Now, if there is any questions, most welcome. Pratibha. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, and uh, I would like to say thanks to you, sir, to accept my invitation and share your valuable time with us. And I believe uh, uh, with uh, you have shared your research partner with all of us and those who want to pursue the topic fluid and uh, they will be they are very grateful and they will uh, it will be very helpful for them and uh, once again i would like to say thank you sir that's it thank you thank you thank you Pradeep. thank you very much okay okay